Our next guest has been fighting for equality and justice for most of her life. Dr. Seema Samar has made a name for herself across Afghanistan and the world as an educator of the marginalized and defender of human rights. She details her inspiring journey as a medical doctor, public official, Nobel Peace Prize nominee, and a thorn in the side of the Taliban in her memoir, Outspoken, My Fight for Freedom and Human Rights in Afghanistan. Dr. Seema Samar is joining us now. Welcome to Prime. So great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You've stayed in the spotlight as a lifelong advocate for girls and women, equality and justice. Why did you decide now was the time to finally share your story in this book, which I have right here? Yes. Thank you so much for having the book and uh, thank you for asking this question. Um, well, I was busy before that, so I thought that I, this is a time to, to write the book. And it was after the collapse of the regime I am forced to stay in the U.S. And I had time. I would like to also thank the Harvard University and also Fletcher School at Taft University, who gave me the possibility and facilitate that I was able to write that book. And I wanted to do that because I wanted the young girls in Afghanistan to to know that it's uh, um, everything is possible. It's not impossible if they have commitment, they can do uh, and reach to the uh, to the dream that they have. Now, since the late 1970s, you've been resistant to the dangerous regimes that plagued your home country. You lost your husband. Sorry about that, and other members of his family. But despite that, you have continued to evolve into a force and advocate for the oppressed. How did it feel reflecting on, on everything that you've done over the last uh, couple of decades? Yeah, it was not easy. It was quite difficult and it's still very difficult. But when I look back that I helped some family, some women who survived because of my, um, when I was practicing health, and also uh, I see the girls and the young boys who got educated, and they were able to go to the schools that I established, it gives me more courage to continue that. And I have to say also that I, I'm proudly saying that I was the at least behind the whole introduction of human rights in my country Af in Afghanistan. And I also wanted to say that Afghanistan is not only uh, what media portray. And you, you mentioned courage. You've had so much courage. Does looking back on all of this also help you look forward at what you still want to accomplish? Yes, I think it is. And I'm, as I said, that I'm happy that I was uh, able to promote human rights and protect human rights in Afghanistan during the last 20 years. But uh, I keep saying that uh, the knowledge that I give to the people, the awareness that I give to the own human rights to them, uh, and uh, that is something that I'm so hopeful. No matter how dark is the night, uh, the sun will come up next morning and it will be dawn. So hopefully that will be also in Afghanistan. And I also want to say that unfortunately Afghanistan is a collective failure of uh, Afghan people, Afghan government, and also the international community. And there is an obligation of all of us to uh, promote and protect human rights in Afghanistan, and particularly women's rights in the country. And you've done so much for women and girls through your organization, Shahada. And you're also the chair of the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission. From, from 2002 to, two, to 2019, you were the chair. You not only introduced the concept of human rights to your people, but you sought accountability and justice from those who violated them. What is the current state of uh, affairs in the country for women and girls? And do you see yourself going back at some point? Uh, I'm dreaming to go back as soon as I, as the situation permit. Uh, yes, I think the unfortunately it's a devastating situation of human rights in the country and humanitarian situation is really really dire. Uh, and I think that the, uh, the the continuation of the culture of impunity is very very common in Afghanistan. The previous government collapsed because what we did in the in the Bonn Agreement after 9/11. We had the we put the roadmap for the future of Afghanistan for a new beginning for Afghanistan, but what was missing was accountability, injustice for violation of human rights, in commission of war crimes and crimes against humanity.
humanity. And it continues, unfortunately. Thank you so much for your time tonight. You can learn more about her incredible story in her memoir, Outspoken, My Fight for Freedom and Human Rights in Afghanistan, available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.